So we're just listening to a little 40 meter lower sideband uh, ham radio chatter using the RTL SDR shortwave uh, software defined receiver. Now in order to do this we need to upconvert uh, the HF band like we're listening to here up into the frequency range that can be received by the RTL, or RTL SDR. And we're doing that using a little diode ring mixer that uh, I showed on a video um, a, a few weeks back. And I'll put a link to that video down below. So let's talk about the process and how this works. So this is the uh, double balanced diode ring mixer right here. Into the RF port, I've just got that connected directly to on my outside antenna to receive the HF frequencies. The local oscillator port, or LO, is being fed by a signal generator. And then the IF output of the mixer is being fed directly into the RTL SDR dongle receiver. Of course, the IF output of the mixer is going to contain a number of different frequency components, basically various combinations of multiples of the RF input frequency and the LO. The two that you typically concern yourself with are just the sum of the two frequencies or the difference of them. In our case, we're going to use the sum. So I've chosen a 120 megahertz local oscillator frequency. So that'll translate uh, the HF signals up by 120 megahertz to land them inside the frequency range of the RTL SDR. And I chose this because that will put this whole frequency range into a uh, IF range of 120 to 150 megahertz. And this lies above the FM broadcast band, so I won't interfere with that. So it's a, a decent uh, a frequency to pick. I'm also choosing to use the sum frequency rather than the difference to avoid something called spectral inversion. And uh, let me talk a little bit about what I mean by that. This diagram here shows what I'm talking about when it comes to spectral inversion. Let's say this is my original signal and maybe with modulation it has some kind of a shape to it in terms of its occupied bandwidth. When we mix that with a local oscillator, the sum basically looks just like the same signal just translated up in frequency. But the difference frequency essentially folds around and mirrors around the local oscillator so that the spectrum is inverted. It's kind of turning like an upper sideband signal to a lower sideband signal and vice versa. So I wanted to preserve you know, the spectrum shape and the, the spectrum direction, if you will, and not invert the spectrum. So I chose to use the sum frequency. So the desire to land here in this frequency band and the desire to use the sum of the LO and the RF is what led to the choice for the 120 megahertz local oscillator frequency. Well, there are changes that you'd probably make or additions that you'd make uh, to this process if you're going to build this thing for permanent use. This is really just put together here for demonstration purposes. And some of those changes would include filtering. And filtering can be applied in any of these three paths and there's reason to do it in all of them. Uh, first of all, you may want to filter the local oscillator so that none of the harmonics from the local oscillator get into the mixer. And that will help to reduce some of the higher order uh, products that you get out of the mixer. Uh, second, and probably most important, is you would probably want to filter uh, the signals coming into the RF port. This is called pre-selection. And what that will do is prevent signals from other frequencies and particularly outside of the band of interest from ultimately mixing down and creating uh, mixing products that are in the IF frequency range of interest. So by restricting the filter or restricting the signals going into the RF port, you could prevent those other signals from landing in the IF. And thirdly, you often, oftentimes would want to put a filter in the IF as well because you're always going to get these multiple products, the sum frequency, the difference frequency, etc. So by filtering out uh, all of the other products that you don't want and only keeping maybe the sum or the difference or whatever you're interested in, you're preventing all these other products from hitting the front end of the receiver and potentially overloading it or doing things like that. So really, in an ideal sense, you would want some pre-selection filtering, some IF filtering, and possibly some local oscillator filtering. But for this quick demonstration, uh, we're doing away with all of that just to show the process. A little bit of a closer-up diagram here of uh, the mixer. And again, I'll put a link to the construction and details of this mixer in the notes below. We've got our local oscillator signal coming in here from the signal generator. 
this signal, this is the lead going out to the antenna, and then this is the connection right into the uh, SDR receiver. You may notice from this display of uh, on HD SDR that the frequencies shown here are shown at the HF frequency range. They're not shown at the, the sum frequency. And uh, the software package makes it real easy to go deal with that. If you go to options and then RF front end and calibration, it brings up this dialog box here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And what this allows you to do is to select what up converter local oscillator frequency you're using and you dial that frequency in right here and by selecting that and applying it that subtracts that local oscillator frequency from the frequency displays that are shown on the main display and therefore you can tune in the frequencies that you would expect to see and make it real easy to tune around and just like you're using an ordinary standalone receiver. So there's not a whole lot of uh, activity on 40 meters here this afternoon but uh, we can listen to a couple of signals here here's a signal here at 7.175 megahertz you hear him talking and we can tune over very quickly to this signal here it's uh, 7.185 there's some signals going on there it looks like there's some weaker signals going on up here as well another signal there as well but very easy to see the signals you can kind of see their tracks in the uh, uh, spectrogram or waterfall display and it makes it very easy to kind of see where activity is I've got this zoomed in quite a bit but with this combination you can look at up to about a 3 megahertz frequency span which you know, greatly exceeds uh, the allocated amateur radio frequency spectrum so it's real easy to look at the entire uh, ham radio band at one glance. Uh, of course, this could also be used to tune in uh, shortwave signals as well. I've retuned up into the 25 meter uh, international shortwave broadcasting band, and uh, we can see a lot of activity. But I also see kind of these, you know, kind of regular. It's almost like a comb of signals popping up here. And oftentimes when you're doing this, uh, that's your indication that the front end is actually getting overloaded, and this is all distortion. So uh, HD SDR and SDR Sharp and a lot of the other software packages allow you to go in and control the way the gain is set up in the RTL SDR. The way we control that in HD SDR is to hit this external I.O. button. And that brings up this dialog box and this allows you to control some of the hardware aspects of the chips inside of the RTL SDR. Uh, you'll notice that I've got the tuner AGC uh, checkbox checked. You can also turn on the RTL AGC. But you can see with that combination I still have a lot of these distortion components. So let's turn that one off and also turn off the tuner AGC and I can basically manually control the front end gain of the receiver and you can see if it turned the gain up too high you get those distortion products pop in there. If I turn the uh, gain down, you can see it clear up you know, not only in the spectrum, but also clear up uh, down here uh, you know, in the spectrum plot as well as the spectrogram. So with, uh, with this setting, we now can zoom out and actually listen to some of these stations. So let's kind of zoom out so you can see the whole picture of what's going on uh, in the software here. And uh, let's turn the volume up here and listen to a few of these stations. Oh, that one sounds like it's in Spanish. Yeah, it sounds like a religious station there. So again, uh, what's really great about this is uh, being able to you know, see all of the stations across the entire band here to see which stations are active. So it makes it very easy to go tune around and listen to your stations of interest. So uh, adding a mixer to the uh, front end of one of these RTL SDRs really expands the capabilities uh, to into shortwave listening and ham radio listening and things like that. 
And uh, in addition to all the other, you know, literally dozens and dozens or hundreds of different applications for listening up in the higher bands, from everything from decoding weather satellites to listening to uh, uh, public service uh, transmissions and things like that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. And uh, I think maybe in the future we'll take a look at uh, some of the other um, mixers that are already made uh, for the RTL SDR that are really just plug and play where you don't have to build anything. Uh, thanks again for watching.